Hey everybody. Uh, so what I want to do is a quick video looking at uh, the weathering ta uh, effect in Lumion. Now this is one that uh, if you don't use it in a lot of your renders, I highly recommend that you start using it because um, weathering is kind of like this built-in Lumion cheat almost where it um, it can help you get shadows. Like so uh, since Lumion doesn't really have ambient occlusion, this will actually help you um, get that. Now I'm going to show you um, not only what all nine of the weathering kind of look like when they're put onto just the material that they're supposed to be applied to. Example, the leather uh, weathering applied to leather, but they don't necessarily always have to be on that particular material. Um, so for an example, later in tutorial, um, what I'm going to show you is just how to take um, the stone weathering and we can apply that to some things that actually give an interesting little effect that i know a lot of architects uh and just uh people that use lumion in general are actually going to like this trick um it is a bit of a little sneak uh peek at one of the, the videos i have coming up soon um but i know that it's something that people are always asking for more of in lumion so uh I, hopefully this trick will actually kind of you know put, put some rest to that and you'll be able to uh have uh, some higher quality images. So uh, let's just get into it now though. So uh, this first one here, now this is aluminum. So I will say that right off the bat, I feel like a lot of people have actually used weathering before and they just come in here that's either on zero and they're like, oh, I wonder what this does. They crank it all the way up and they're like, okay, well, this is a stupid effect. Like, why would I want this? I don't completely understand why it turns into this like mossiness. Like it seems like no matter what the texture is, it, al it always does this. Um, but each texture to me has two limits so the first limit uh it seems like they're all at 0.5 so at 0.5 you're not going to get any of this like deformation i guess you would call it i'm not sure what um i guess how to kind of classify that but anything before 0.5 is just shadows it doesn't really seem to affect the overall texture besides the fact that they're shadows so example here maybe this isn't the best one but as you can see it is it is changing the texture but then once you kind of go past that 0.5 you can actually start to see that, you know, like, so you start to see it at 0.6 with aluminum. As I said, they can kind of change from texture, but we get this little area here and it starts to kind of creeping in. Whereas before, you know, all you're really getting, like, it's just making, um, it's making like the actual color map kind of pop out. Whereas, as, as I said, past 0.5, you kind of get this, like, it's actually seems like it's adding stuff to it. Um, so yeah, so aluminum, uh, pretty straightforward. It seems like that kind of caps out at like 0.7 and then you start getting the, the green stuff. As I said, I would probably recommend you don't really use the green stuff unless it's like a heavy rust or something like that. And even then I'd probably recommend that you just bring in like a texture from polygon or substance or something because you can get a little more, uh, realism. Uh, and so we'll keep going on here. And as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is, I, I wanted to go through this just to give a thorough tutorial. Um, you don't necessarily have to watch all nine of these. I just kind of wanted to get to the point and say like, you know, this is what each one does because they do have niche, you know, uses for like the the wood weathering on wood, for example. But weathering in general, as I said, is not actually like it, it has much, a much better purpose <laughs> and it's not actually doing it with these ones. So uh, if we hop back into this here. So with this one, um, there's not a lot of definition in here. So maybe I will actually use a different wood texture. Maybe we do something like this. We go to weathering for wood. We bring it up as you can see so this is starting to just darken everything but once we get past this point here so this one has about a 0.6 and we bring that up to 0.7 as you can see it's actually starting to make the wood um like chipped and old um and so if we actually hop back to the one i was just using uh, if we take this and we go to like 0.7 as you or oh sorry on the wood one here so as you can see it actually starts to erode those edges so if you have something that's like um an old table or something like that you can actually put this on and you're going to get that like chipped look around the edge so with this one obviously weathering works well uh and for the leather one that's another one that i think that it actually kind of does its purpose because if you put this on something like a leather couch um the seams are going to start to have this ripped look to it to just make it look old um and this one i find that the good effect that it's not kind of overpowering it it's at like 0.8 um and then you start to see as you can like so this is the flat one if we bring this up to like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, uh, 0.5, then you can start to see that all those little dimples stand out more. Uh, and this can just really help you kind of get that, like that leather effect, because I find that if you don't use it um, with leather, um, it, it just kind of looks like a black surface. You can't really tell that it is leather, whereas this will help it kind of like the light, um, 
just have a little more like variation, I guess. So it looks, it does look like uh, leather. Uh, so this one here, this is chrome. So um, there wasn't a silver uh, metal, at least one that I found. So I just decided to use chrome. Um, and I also turned the gloss down on all my metals to 0.9, um, just because I find that that doesn't give you like a mirror like reflection in Lumion, but it also still gives that reflective look just a little more realistic in my opinion. Ah, uh, yeah. So for this one, um, as I said, so you go up the, the metal ones all kind of give you the same effect in my opinion. Like, you know, you're going to see here, it's just kind of like the style at which it sort of starts creeping in there. So I won't focus too much on this one, but as you can see, you know, right here, not changing anything. You go up, you go up, you go up, then you hit about 0.5 and starts changing it. So that's kind of how that works. Rock is kind of an interesting one because you actually can change the rock pretty dramatically just based on the weathering. So if we set this to stone, we turn this up, as you can see, like with here, we're just changing shadows. Uh, you start to go up. It almost like it almost seems like the shadows are kind of like go in like it's like the little crevices. But then once you start to go past point five, it almost starts to expand outwards, like in a, in a weird way. So it goes like, OK, so if we watch that again going up, we start to see the little shadows down here. And then it almost start, it then pops out. And so then you're getting like this really strong effect. Now, this one, in my opinion, you actually could go up past like this green area because this kind of looks like this moss, like this old rock. Uh, I wouldn't overdo it. And as you can see, it only grows kind of on like certain parts. Um, I think that's just because it's a cube. Um, it's probably not the optimal thing to be using, but it was just quick. Um, so, yeah, so this one, as I said, like I think that if you want to do rocks, just put it at like 0.6 and you get really defined shadows um, and uh, it'll just make your rocks look a little better. And yeah, as I said, I won't look too much at the metals because they all kind of have the exact same effect. I, you should probably keep them maybe at like 0.6 if you do use them. I actually did mention in my metal series that I did uh, a while back that I don't really like using weathering um, on metals unless they are actually outside. Like I don't put... Um, weathering on metals that are for interior scenes um unless it's like it has to be like this really beat up copper pot i know some people do it just to get some more like shadows in there but i find that that doesn't really give you the effect um that you kind of want with this because you know i want the with the uh, with the metal i want it to be kind of rough like i don't want it to have a great reflection but i also don't want it to look old in a lot of cases so um there's no really wrong answer for that it's just you have to be able to get um, I guess the effect that you want it to be. Uh, and then, yeah, as I said, these three are all kind of the same, you know, metal sort of doing the same thing. Like turn it up. It does that thing. Uh, plastic is another one. It's kind of like leather though, where, uh, you can actually get a pretty cool effect by doing this. So we turn this all the way down. As you can see, you can barely see, uh, all the little dimples in this. And I actually scaled this up quite a bit just so you could see it. So maybe we bring that down a bit and you can bring the relief up. I find that that's probably, um, one of the better ways of doing it because this is going to give you the look of like rough plastic, but it's new and then obviously weathering uh, With this is going to give it like an old beat up look and like again, there's no wrong answer with this It's just what you need for the scene So um, this one can make it a little more interesting and if you scale that down a bit more as you can see like the um, The weathering has sort of the, the same pattern. So even if I'm moving it up like as you can see how do I say this here? so um so if I bring it down here, you can't really tell, or I guess so you can tell that like the map is changing, but if I go up here and I say weathering, okay, so I'm moving it. And as you can see that weathering is kind of moving for the most part with, um, with the texture. But then if you crank it up here, you can really see that it kind of has like a, as you can see the texture, like when it's up in like the, the, um, the upper half, then it starts to kind of move like, or stay stationary. Sorry. It's kind of weird to say, but, um, yeah, so I think that that's a pretty baseline um, information on all of these um, weathering. So now we can do a, th a couple things that are kind of interesting with it. So the first one, uh, if we go to level two here, I need to find the rock. Right, so this is just a polygon rock that I brought uh, into, um, into Lumion. And now, as you can see, you know, this does look kind of dull. There's nothing special about it. I didn't use a gloss mask or anything like that for this one. I just brought the color and the normal right in. So uh, what we do is I just kind of brought the gloss down so it did look really rough. Um, but as you can see, there's just something wrong about this. Like it doesn't look realistic. Like it just kind of looks like it's, you know, it's just there, but it's not interacting with the scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on stone weathering. We're going to bring it up. And as you can see, as soon as you start to do that, you're getting all these little, like all the little crevices are kind of starting to like pop because it, it looks more realistic with the shadows. Uh, and if you keep dragging it up, as you can see, you get like to this point here where it's like, you know, this is really starting to affect the rock. Like this is a really rough rock. If you keep going up, then you get this. So this is, 
you know, maybe a little bit too much, but it just depends on the look. And then if you go up, then you start to get this. And as you can see, um, this is a much better way of seeing it when it's like not on the cube because the cube I think just has weird kind of parameters to it. Um, this looks a lot better when it has like kind of cracks and crevices to fill in. So um, it's a pretty cool uh, effect, as I said, and you know, you can change the scale. Um, and as you can see the, the rocks um, or the, the moss or whatever you want to call this on the rock is actually staying in the same place because it's kind of based on like, uh, kind of talking about even what I was saying with the plastic, it's sort of based on like the shape of the object. Whereas like with this, it's just kind of based on the shadows. Right. So yeah, that's a, as I said, that's kind of like a one that you can just sort of use in this check and go like, okay, look at how that's kind of working, crank it up, see all the crevices. So now we're going to go to the one that uh, is probably the most helpful one in my opinion. So this is how you do uh, siding in Lumion, in my opinion. Oop, a little sneak peek on the last one there. Um, so in this one, this is one that I want to focus on and take a whole video just showing how to bring certain things in. In my last video or second last video, uh, I looked at mesh displacement. While I recommend you don't use texture or like take a... Uh, displacement map into SketchUp to get that displacement, I very highly recommend that you actually model the stuff that you want in your Lumion scene. Example, you want siding, then actually model the siding. Um, I did have the instant um, the instant siding add-on from Valley Architects, which is like about $10, I think, um, but it does save you time. However, if you want to actually model this yourself, you could do this wall in like a minute, maybe, because you just make one make an array all the way up or divide it until you find the one you want. Um, but there is one problem with doing that is that if you do this and you go into photo mode, uh, you're, you don't really get a lot of shadows. Like it might look okay here, but it's not enough shadows to really distinguish it. And I find that it like, it just doesn't look right to the eye. And so what you do is you get the texture that you want. So we come in here and maybe I'll make this like a, uh, um, maybe just a green texture. So we'll bring the gloss down. And then what we're gonna do is I like to use stone. That's the one I find works best for this. We're just gonna turn the weathering up a little bit. And as you can see, when we do that, we're not getting any of these weird shadows. Like it, it looks normal because what we're now doing is because of how, how I mentioned, like it weathering will affect the surface based on its shape. So with these shingles, the, the, um, the stone weathering wants to kind of go and fill in these cracks here. And so if we zoom out, now we have these like much stronger shadows. And so it's very easy to see um, that this is siding on a house. Um, it's very light on Lumion. So if you do this in SketchUp, um, it, I think it would actually be much faster than doing it uh, with a texture when it comes to rendering um, because the textures can really slow down Lumion. But if you are able to just model it yourself, then it's gonna speed it up and um, you'll get a much better effect. Um, and for anyone that was saying like they need more textures uh, for siding and stuff like that in Lumion, this is actually, in my opinion, the way you should be doing it because textures are only so good, as I mentioned in Lumion. If you want those really, really high quality shots, especially up close, you got to actually make the geometry. Um, so in this case, siding, super easy. Just put it in. Uh, you can apply any texture you want. Maybe put something that has a little bit of roughness on it, like a normal map. And then you have an extremely realistic looking siding with shadows and uh, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, so the last thing I just kind of want to show is sort of what we touched on with the leather at the beginning. So I just have a quick chair here and uh, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to click on this. Now the, the legs might change a little bit for this. I couldn't be bothered to just split the two up into different material IDs because it just wasn't really necessary. Um, so what I am then going to do is I'm going to go to weathering. I'm going to go to leather. And if I go up here, as you can see, we're starting to get all of these um, these lines here. So you can see like around here, we're getting sort of like these stretches in the creases here. It's getting like this dirty look to it. And then watch what happens when we keep going up. So it actually starts to like tear apart. So it, you get that old leather look like it's the leather, I guess the hide, I think it's called. A, I don't really know leather that well, but the hide is starting to separate um, from kind of like the I guess the base of it, I'm not really sure to describe that, but what you're left with is almost like this fabricy look. Um, and so it's just another example of how like weathering will adapt to the scene. Um, and it's, so it, it is kind of a weird thing using cubes for that. Like I wanted to just kind of get a quick uh, overview of that, but you really start to see weathering shine when it comes to things like uh, 
you know, if you're doing like sidewalks, even like curbs, you're doing siding, chairs, anything like that. Um, I do recommend that you kind of play around with sliding at least a, or uh, weathering at least a little bit, um, especially on things like leather um, in fabric, especially for interiors, because you really get like this extra level of detail. Um, and to my knowledge, this doesn't cost um, Lumion anything in render times because it's just kind of altering um, I guess the texture right on top of it. And so Lumion handles it very well because it's a built-in feature and I don't think it struggles too much, but I could be wrong about that, but I think it's pretty safe to use on uh, as many textures as you can be bothered to use. Um, so yeah, that is a, uh, I don't even want to say it was a fairly comprehensive guide. I feel like this is just kind of like the beginning of the, the stuff that you can do with it. Like there is a lot of cool things I've seen people do with weathering, um, but I didn't want to get into all of them now. Like these are the ones that I think are like the most basic uses of them. Uh, as I said, in my opinion, metal, not that great. I don't like the weathering um, just because um, if I want something to be rusted, I'm probably just going to go and get a rusted metal texture because I find that you can get much more defined uh, rust to it. Because if I, you know, if I have like a shipping container, like a container house and I want it rusted, I really, really want it to have like a, a really gritty rust look to it. Whereas weathering is good for kind of far back. But if you want really up close, then I think that texture is going to work better for that. Since in that case, you know, um, well, I guess you could use the mesh displacement as well, but that's, uh, you know, for something like, rust i feel like it's not quite enough displacement to just uh you know not use uh, a texture so yeah i hope that um everyone found this interesting uh if there's any people out there watching this that don't use weathering uh, i really hope that you have good luck using it because this is um one of the features that i thought was uh, pretty incredible when i first learned about it like it really adds a lot to it um and i guess one last thing i'll mention is like i don't really use this too much because i think that you should always kind of round off edges in something like sketchup or blender when you use it but if we uh, zoom in on this quickly let me just zoom in here um this is one that's in the weathering tab even though it's not quite weathering but just take the edges you can you know go up here and then as you can see it will kind of just oh wait so as you can see it just kind of you know helps take the edge off stuff I, as I said, I, I think that it's better if you just go in and do it in SketchUp, but whatever. Um, if uh, you found this tutorial helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button for me and help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you are already subscribed, thank you very, very much for supporting the channel. Um, I uh, have really enjoyed making videos for everyone and meeting a lot of you and uh, seeing some of the renders that you guys have been coming up with. So um, yeah, if you have anything cool that you want to show me, uh, you can reach me at g.miles at luminouslabs.ca, uh, whether it's your render or maybe like a cool add-on. Um, you know, I always like getting emails um, about that kind of stuff. So it'd be pretty interesting to have a conversation with you guys. Um, I'm going to leave it there though. Have a great night.